G'day, I'm Max Chandler-Mayda, your Greens candidate for Griffith. Here are some of the local things I'll be pushing for over in just under a minute uh, if I win Griffith and we end up in the balance of power. One, we want to increase the frequency of the 192 bus. We want to ensure that their ferry terminal is built at the end of Victoria Street to ensure that uh, the apartment residents there have a ferry crossing. We also want to push back on the overdevelopment in West End and specifically developments like next, the one next to Davies Park. We think that land should be acquired for public parkland. In the lead up to the Olympics, we want to make sure that the land that's being acquired for the media hub along Montague Road is ultimately turned into public parkland. And finally, we want to make sure that property developers stop wielding so much power over the way our neighbourhoods are built and developed. West End is scarred by that process and it's time to make sure that residents are put back in control of the way their neighbourhoods are built and developed. Good day, Jimmy. Thanks for the question. And in answer to it, the first thing we'll do is raise the pension by $332 a fortnight to just over $1,200. We'll also lower the age of retirement from 66, which Labor raised it to, back down to 65. We'll also make sure that we cap private rent increases so people aren't forced out of West End like we're seeing at the moment. We'll also bring dental and mental health into Medicare because that's the financial barrier shouldn't be put in the way of going and getting the crucial help that people need. We'll clear the social housing waiting list by building a million public homes across Australia and 210,000 in Queensland alone. And we'll achieve all of this if I win this seat and I end up in the balance of power, kick Morrison out, only work with Labor, but make sure that they remember their roots and make sure that they start to act in favour of working people again. That will only happen if the Greens are in the balance of power. Good day, Bo. Thanks for your question. Uh, I grew up in West End and I know what you mean by the way the gentrification has pushed First Nations people with, out of the area with rising house prices and failure by both Labor and Liberal governments to invest in Aboriginal public housing. In answer to your question, there's a bunch of things that we're going to do. We're going to spend $371 million on dedicated health uh, and support for First Nations people. We're going to ensure that uh, elders above the age of 60 get access to the gold card so it gets them even more health and uh, mental health support. We're going to spend a billion dollars making sure that there are First Nations-led and run healing places that provide uh, critical care and support to First Nations people, including in West End. We're going to build a million public homes across Australia and 210,000 in Queensland, including dedicated Aboriginal public housing in areas like West End to make sure that you have a, people have a place to live uh, where they need it. We're also going to increase all support payments, including ABS study, above the Henderson poverty line to $1,232 a fortnight. Finally, we're going to push for treaty and uh, truth-telling, and that's going to be led by our First Nations women senators, Lydia Thorpe and Dorinda Cox. I'm really proud of our team, and if the Greens get in the balance of power and push Morrison out, we're going to be able to push Labor to do these things. Good day, Jane. Great question. We're in the middle of a massive housing crisis, as you know, and you're on the front line of it. Uh, we're in a housing crisis partly because neither uh, Labor or Liberal governments want to build any new public housing. And in fact, the state Labor governments just sold off a thousand public homes over the last few years, often to property developers. In the answer to your question, we're going to build a million public homes across Australia and 210,000 in Queensland alone for both social, public housing and temporary crisis accommodation. And that will not only clear the 50,000 long social housing wait list in Queensland, but it also ensure that teachers, workers, nurses, cleaners, anyone else who is on a low income and can't afford to live in the areas where they work gets a home as well. They'll be high quality and they'll uh, modelled off European social housing where we achieve a good social mix as well. We'll also increase homelessness, federal homelessness support, uh, almost fivefold to, by an extra $500 million a year. It was just over $100 million over the last financial year. And we'll do this by getting into the balance of power, winning Griffith, kicking out Morrison and ensuring that uh, Labor listen to the voices of the community uh, and build more public housing. G'day, George. Uh, great question. In answer to the first one, uh, with regards to training, what the Greens have proposed is bringing back free university and TAFE. Why? Because we don't think we should put a $50,000, $70,000 barrier in the way of going and getting an education. With regards to energy costs for small businesses, we've proposed uh, 10K grants for small businesses to buy batteries and up to a $50,000 cheap loan if you need more money than that. So you can store power cheaply and cut your energy bills. We've also proposed reversing Labor's privatisation of electricity retail because all that's led is to price gouging in the energy market and we want to bring back a publicly owned electricity retailer uh, to cut the cost of your bills. With regards to uh, costs of going up for your business, we've proposed two things. One, a $15 billion fund to revive manufacturing in this country because the less we have to be transporting stuff around, the cheaper it's going to be for you. 
And finally, we want to electrify freight. So electrifying a trucking freight and also expanding our electrified rail network. And that's going to cut costs in the long run when it comes to transportation costs. Hope that answers your question. Good day, Paul. Excellent question. And it was deeply disappointing uh, to see recently where the religious discrimination bill was introduced into the lower house of parliament that the current local member, Terry Butler, voted for it. I don't think that represents the views of the Griffith community. And uh, even in its amended form, the religious discrimination bill would have already allowed vicious discriminations against LGBTIQ kids, as well as teachers. And in fact, it still would have allowed teachers to be fired uh, for being trans or for being gay. And frankly, that's uh, a despicable thing to be happening in a country like Australia. So to give you a really short answer, if that bill ever comes before parliament, I'll vote against it and we'll use any leverage I have if I am in the balance of power to make sure that we never have to consider this bill ever again. Thanks. Good day, Mary. Excellent question. Firstly, that's fantastic that you're working with other organisations to work on flood mitigation for the surrounding area. On that, I really think property developers should stop being allowed to build in floodplains, and I hope you're doing lots of other stuff as well. In answer to your question, absolutely yes. The Greens have proposed a levy on coal and gas corporations, and in particular a levy on coal corporations as we phase out of thermal coal and metallurgical coal. Thermal coal by 2030 and coking coal by 2040. What we've said is we phase those industries out. We've got to make sure that they pay their fair share in tax. And where that money goes, $98.4 billion over the next 10 years, goes into flood mitigation, helping to bring the insurance, part of the insurance industry that covers floods and bushfires into public hands. So we can bring down insurance premiums and ensure that everyone uh, can get insured where they need to. Spend some of the money in helping on clean up and disaster relief payments, as well as ensuring that coal and gas workers get a, a good job and income in the uh, transition away from coal and gas. So fantastic question, uh, Mary, and in the short answer is yes. Good day, Abby. Thanks for your question, it's a really good one. In fact, part of the reason uh, I left the Labor Party was because they reopened Manus and Nauru and uh, introduced, reintroduced boat turnbacks and scrapped family reunion visas and frankly, uh, used refugees to divide up our communities rather than bring us together. In answer to your question, uh, absolutely yes. We've proposed specifically for Afghanistan, increasing the humanitarian intake for refugees from Afghanistan by another 4,000. We also want to increase Australia's humanitarian intake for refugees to 50,000 people. We want to scrap the dodgy temporary protection visas for refugees and reintroduce permanent protection visas. We want to end offshore detention in its entirety and ensure that refugees are given a place to be in our community with good income support payments, access to Medicare, housing and the things they need to live a good life. At the end of the day, broadly speaking, the philosophy of our campaign is that we all have more in common with a refugee on Manus than we do with a billionaire like Clive Palmer and I'm sick of politicians trying to divide us up and that's what we'll be fighting for. Thanks for your question and it's an excellent one. In answer to it, we're going to push to increase funding for First Nations media and community radio led by First Nations people to $30 million a year and then index that to ensure that it increases every year. We'll also in, include a separate broadcasting licence for First Nations led media to ensure that you're not forced to compete against other community radio stations. I, the other uh, question you had was around uh, housing uh, for First Nations people and ensuring they're not being pushed out of West End. As I said to Bo, I grew up in West End and I've seen this process and it's been devastating as house prices have gone up and pushed First Nations people out of West End. So what we're going to do instead is build public and affordable housing, a million across Australia, 210,000 uh, in Queensland, and make a portion of that dedicated to First Nations people, including in West End. We're going to achieve that by winning Griffith, getting into the balance of power, kicking Morrison out, and ensuring that Labor listens to the voices of the community and act on things like uh, First Nations community radio and public housing for First Good day, Penny. Really good question. Uh, we know that in Griffith, 50% or close to of households are renters, and it's a real issue really important to my heart because I'm a renter as well. The Greens have proposed at a national level that we introduce a national standard uh, for renters that includes capping rent increases to make sure that people can't have uh, their rent increased at the end of their lease by sometimes up to 100, 150 bucks a week. Uh, increasing, uh, ending no grounds evictions and ensuring that a landlord has to renew a lease and they, unless they can provide a specific reason at the end of that lease. We also want to int introduce rights to make minor improvements to the property and also just generally improve renters' rights across this country. Uh, with regards to property prices, we want to scrap, phase out negative gearing uh, for people with more than one investment property and uh, get rid of the capital gains tax exemptions that are turbocharging uh, this housing crisis at the moment. We also want to build a million public 
and affordable homes across Australia. We're deeply disappointed to see that Labor has backed down on their commitment to phase out negative gearing and essentially has come to the election with the same housing policy as the Liberals. And that's why we need the Greens and the balance of power to make sure we get real action on this housing and rentals crisis. G'day, I'm Max chandler Maida, your Greens candidate for Griffith. I've been asked by Weka to give a three minute vision for what we'd like to see happen in Griffith over the next three years and how we're going to achieve it. I love West End. I was born in a share house uh, on West End on Wynot Street, went to West End State School and Brisbane State High and spent my childhood playing cricket and soccer and water bomb fights on the streets and running around the local neighbourhood. In many ways, it made me who I am today. I'd love to be speaking to you in person at the moment, but unfortunately both Terry Butler and Olivia Roberts refused to come to the Wicca debate, and so they haven't held it. And that's the first time a sitting representative has refused to come to the Wicca debate since I can remember. And I think that speaks to one of the big problems with politics at the moment is they feel like it's completely disconnected from their lives. They feel like politicians are no longer listening to them. And I think that decision not to come to the debate and as a result force Wicca to cancel it uh, is indicative of that problem. West End in many ways is at the epicentre of a lot of the national crises we're facing at the moment. We've just been hit by a climate crisis fueled flood in Brisbane and West End. And we know that that is being fueled by the Labor and Liberal Party's decision to spend public money opening up new coal and gas mines. In fact, they plan to open up 114 new coal and gas mines over the next few years. The Greens, on the other hand, are pushing to phase out coal and gas in a sensible way and spend billions of dollars of money on renewable energy, reviving manufacturing, making sure that rural and regional towns uh, and the coal and gas workers who live in them are guaranteed their income and jobs, regardless of what uh, uh, comes afterwards, and making sure that those towns are invested in to, to ensure we're manufacturing steel, we're mining new minerals, uh, we're building public housing in those areas, we're investing in schools and hospitals, not just there, but across the country. And tackling the climate crisis is crucial to ensuring that we have a safe and secure future. On housing affordability, if I was born today, there's no way I would have been able to grow up in West End. And so we're pushing to cap rent increases to make sure people aren't pushed out of their homes, phase out negative gearing so house prices don't go absolutely nuts, and also invest in public housing, a million across the country and 210,000 in Queensland alone. We're also pushing to bring dental and mental health into Medicare, Free, bring back free university and TAFE, tax billionaires to fund universal free childcare. And we're also at a local area making sure that I'm working with Amy and Jono to push back against overdevelopment and ensure that public infrastructure is spent on local parks, provide public transport, and I'll go into more of that in a little bit detail in my other answers. In short, if I win Griffith, not only will I kick out Morrison, but I'll get into the balance of power. I'll ensure that Labor act, finally act on so many of the issues that we need action on. And without the Greens and the balance of power, then we're just not going to see action on the housing or climate crisis. That much is clear. And that's why I'm asking for your vote on May 21st.